you know, she wasn't really doing battle in the way we had seen Jim. She was she was kind of shrinking to me. She was she was like almost physically shrinking back. And um, then Christy stepped in. Again, I said this on the post show, la- uh, show last night with Steyerwalt. He had predicted it. Steyerwalt had said, I predict Chris Christie st- steps in to be the white knight for Nikki Haley. And man, he called it exactly. Here's the moment in SOT 2. This is the fourth debate, the fourth debate that you would be voted in the first 20 minutes as the most obnoxious blowhard in America. So <laughs> shut up for a while. We're now 25 minutes into this debate. And he has insulted Nikki Haley's basic intelligence, not her positions, her basic intelligence. She doesn't know regions. She wouldn't be able to find something on a map that his three-year-old could find. I've known her for 12 years, which is longer than he's even started to vote in a Republican primary. <laughs> this is a smart, accomplished woman. You should stop insulting so her. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to take so you, it was interesting how the camera got her at the end for the listening audience, just kind of looking down almost demurely and then back up. And I know it's nice, like it, it's nice for him to defend her. I have to say she wants to be commander in chief. I really wanted her to say, Chris, thank you. I got this. And to interrupt mm. him and to defend herself, she didn't. Uh, Megan, I see what you're saying. And by the way, let me echo what Rich said. You must have felt like the lion tamer or the ringmaster in a circus last night, except all the animals were cocaine bear. Uh, It was just, you know, (laughs) damn the torpedoes. I'm holding nothing back. I I, I saw what you're saying about CNN says they're going to do two debates. But, you know, for this could be the last time we see Chris Christie and Vivek Ramaswamy on stage. Yeah. as presidential candidate. So I'm sure their attitude was, we're, we're holding nothing back. You could see <laughs> Bruce Banner bear. turning into the Hulk on stage in front of us. <laughs> and so I think that's like, like, in that kind of environment, look, we all know Nikki Haley can be really tough. When she was at the United Nations, she was blessing all those hearts up there. Um, I, I don't, I, I think she's proven her toughness. I think, you know, often women candidates, there's this question of, oh, you know, is she, is she tough enough to be the commander in chief? I think Nikki Haley cleared that that threshold a long time ago. I, I think everybody can find, you know, whether you think the appropriate comparison is Margaret Thatcher or whatever past woman leader strike you as the ideal. I, I don't think anybody looks at Nikki Haley and, sa- and says, oh, she's a squish, which is why DeSantis is, oh, she always backs down uh, attack. Just just struck me as like that doesn't fit. I wasn't sure where that came from. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm sure he wants to say, like, look, everybody wants to say I'm the fighter. And going back to Howard Dean, the, the easiest, you know, brand to sell yourself as is everybody else in this party is a weak, squishy sellout. And I'm the fighter. I'm the one who's representing the Democrat side of the. And it's like, but it's a pose, by the way. Right. You know, um, but almost all of them have some version of it. And it, it's particularly egregious when it comes from Ramaswamy. In one of the earlier debates, there was like, you know, the Republican Party has been losing. What do they need to do? Vivek Ramaswamy, you've never been elected to anything. What do Republicans need to do to win more? Uh, which I think was a uh, less than ideal person to, to ask that kind of question. Mm. Um, so I, and I, I just got she, she's beat up on Ramaswamy in like several debates now. I think we've all seen that. I think this was Chris Christie, you know, like he wanted to pull open the shirt and show Superman uh, and kind of to show up. And he kind of playing to type. We, we all remember yeah. The, the one Christie debate moment everybody remembers is when he used Marco Rubio as a tackling dummy back in 2016. And I think he's been waiting to do that. And his whole presidential campaign was predicated on this idea that at some point he'd be on a stage with Trump and he'd get a chance to really let into Trump. And we've never seen Trump really get, you know, uh, a blistering attack, you know, uh, uh, well, from, an, so, from a one-time so ally. This is the thing mm-hmm. about Christie is he is, say what you will about the guy, and I realize most of the Republicans are not fans, He is the best there is at forensically diagnosing a candidate's obfuscation or frailties on that debate stage. That's what he did to Marco Rubio. He listens, he's smart, and as a lawyer, he hears it. He hears it when they're dodging, Mm -hmm. when they're evading. He called it out last night um, when he was talking about how Ron DeSantis DeSantis did not ask the question about Hamas and the hostages. Here's a bit of it, Sot 4. This is the problem with the first three debates. Ron gets asked a question and he doesn't answer it. Your question was very specific. You said, would you send American troops as commander in chief? And 
he went on to this minute and 30 second Hosanna about his knowledge of the military and what we need to do and didn't answer your question. Look, when you're president of the United States, you're not gonna have a choice whether to answer that question or not. Your generals, your secretary of defense, your secretary of state, your national security advisor are gonna present plans to you. They're gonna look at you and say, do we go or don't we, Mr. President? And you can't give a 90 second speech about your military service. Oh my gosh, that was good, Rich. You gotta give it to Christy on that one. Yeah, I'm totally with you. It, it shows tremendous forensic skill. And this, this might sound like a stupid thing to say, but it's hard to think and talk at the same time. And it's hard to, to listen to other people when you're on a stage like that, because you're thinking, well, what question might come to me next? What would I have said to uh, th this question that that just you know was asked to another candidate that might come to me? And it's hard to just focus with, in detail on what other people are saying. And Christy has the ability to do that. That was, that was a good hit on DeSantis. And DeSantis had no rejoinder and Christy came back on a couple other answers and pointed out the same thing on one of them on you know whether Trump is fit fit as a matter of age I thought most people listening to Santos would have thought he he answered that right he's he's saying he's not uh, unsuited but he's too old and now needs someone younger um but no one else is better on his feet than Christy the problem he has is he had a couple of assumptions going into this race. One is that Trump would be on the stage, right? And he's not. Mm -hmm. uh, another would be rewarded by being a truth teller and being willing to say things about Trump that no one else will say. And some, a lot of people don't want to hear because it would translate as toughness, translate as forthrightness. And it's just made him radioactive. He wasn't in a strong position going into the race, but I was struck at some of the same numbers you cited to him. And one of the questions, New Hampshire is his state. You know, that's where he's at 14 percent, which in the context of this, the second place battle is is respectable. Sixty percent of people have an unfavorable uh, view of him in New Hampshire. You know, two thirds of people would be angry or dissatisfied, as you noted, if he got the nomination. That's in his state. And that's mm -hmm. just why there's zero path for him. He might overperform in New Hampshire because independents and Democrats can vote. But that's not true everywhere else. You know, that can get you to 20 in New Hampshire, which might be enough to be a distant second or to trip up Nikki Haley if she has a chance against Trump. But it's not getting him the nomination, which is why he shouldn't, even though he's good at it and I, he, he has a zeal for it, he should not be on that stage. Debt. Mm, you can go to bed thinking about it, wake up thinking about it, eat your lunch thinking about it all day. High interest credit cards and loans make it nearly impossible to pay off your debt. And insane inflation keeps you stuck paycheck to paycheck. The system winds up trapping you in debt. Donewithdebt.com with can be a lifeline. I have spoken in the past about my own experience with debt back in law school. It was bad. Well, donewithdebt.com has a new strategy to help erase your debt faster and easier than you ever thought possible. Here's what they can do for you. Analyze all the debt options you qualify for, minimize interest rates, cut medical bills, and reduce debt without bankruptcy and without a loan. But you need to hurry. Some debt solutions are time sensitive. Go to done, D-O-N-E, with debt, D-E-B-T, dot com. Find out how, how easy they can make it and find out if it's right for you. Done with debt, dot com. Done with debt, dot com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.